It's a story all too familiar for those in Boulder County. Thousands are still out of their homes this morning as the in car fire continues to burn after sparking yesterday afternoon. As of last check, 122 acres have been burned and the blaze is 0% contained. Now this is just miles from where the Marshall Fire tore through more than 1,000 homes just three months ago. 19,000 people and 8,000 homes were under evacuation orders and at last check, no structures have been damaged. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm Jessica Crawford. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Our Denver 7's Christian Lopez is at the East Boulder Community Center this morning where many spent the night. So Christian, how are things looking in Boulder this morning so far? Yeah, guys, well, we just got here not too long ago. You can still see all of that smoke up there on the foothills. We're going to zoom in for you. The good news is the firefighters have been able to keep away the flames from any houses, and today they continue working to get this fire contained so people can return home. Now, the combination of warm temperatures and strong winds yesterday were what caused this fire to spread quickly, but crews on the scene told us that they were able to protect neighborhoods thanks to mitigation efforts that have taken place up until now, like clearing out dry vegetation. And they told us that the Table Mesa neighborhood was actually a spot where they had an interagency training last year, so that helps them respond even faster. We quite literally had a multi-company training in this neighborhood below us uh, last spring. Um, and so all those resources came in, knew exactly what they needed to do, pulled their hose lines, went into a structured defensive posture, and had everything lined out in moments. And as far as what caused the fire, that is all still under investigation. And coming up in our next half hour, we will we'll bring you the story of an evacuee who is also a Marshall fire victim. And of course, we're going to continue monitoring this fire and bring you the very latest. We're live in Boulder this morning. I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you. And as Christian just mentioned, the high winds yesterday played a major role in how fast that fire spread. There were red flag warnings and fire weather watches in place because of those conditions. Katie, you mentioned all of those yesterday. Are those watches and warnings still in effect this morning? Uh, good news today, Jessica, the winds will be calmer there in Boulder County, but this morning we do still have an air quality alert in effect for Boulder off to the west near Netherland and Allens Park in Jamestown based on the heavy smoke from the NCAR fire. Tomorrow the winds will elevate once again, increasing our fire danger from Colorado Springs down through Pueblo and Trinidad. A fire weather watch set to go in effect Monday with the gustiest conditions, warm and dry weather down in to Alamosa. You combine that with the low relative humidity, which is why it's just cause for a lot of those fires that spark and are hard to contain. In terms of our wind gusts outside this morning, relatively calm conditions from Boulder into Broomfield and across the eastern plains. Temperatures right now we're in the 20s and 30s and already in the 40s down to Colorado Springs and it's going to be a warm afternoon once again by lunchtime here in Denver, 65 degrees. We're expecting highs in the 70s this afternoon, even warmer tomorrow and then the chance for some much needed moisture. More on that still to come. All right, thank you, Katie. Well, for evacuees with pets, the Humane Society of Boulder Valley is accepting smaller pets and companion animals for shelter and care. That address is 2323 55th Street in Boulder. If you have a larger pet, the Boulder County Fairgrounds is accepting large animals. That address is 9595 Nelson Road in Longmont. Well, just a few miles away, the cleanup continues following the destruction left behind by the Marshall Fire. Alicia Miller tweeted this photo out when she stopped by her Louisville property when her home once stood to see if debris removal started in the area and she was caught off guard seeing that white smoke from the in car fire just off in the distance. The frequency just keeps seeming to become more and more uh, often and um, it's just really terrifying. Did you see a cloud of white smoke off in the distance? What was going through your mind? Oh my gosh, not again, not another community. Just when is it gonna stop? Miller says she signed a long-term lease at a property that was in today's evacuation zone. She says as much as she loves the Boulder area, she's considering moving somewhere else. And we will continue to watch all the developments from the NCAR fire very closely throughout the day here on Denver 7. That's right, and you can find updates from us on air, online, at thedenverchannel.com, and of course on the Denver 7 Plus app. Just download the Denver 7 Plus app on your Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Android device to start watching.
Well, President Joe Biden is back in the United States this morning after his high stakes trip to Poland as Russia continues to invade Ukraine. Biden had some choice words for President Putin, calling him a butcher in those remarks as two Russian missiles rocked the western Ukrainian city of Lviv, hitting a defense facility and an old oil depot. ABC's James Longman is there. This is an oil depot. You can see the flames there burning. The city was meant to be a sanctuary for thousands, and now it feels like the war has come to them. And Ukrainian President Zelensky is asking now for more weapons as Biden wrapped up his trip in Poland, reassuring leaders the U.S. has an obligation under NATO rules to defend his allies. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principles, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. And as the attacks from Russia continue, many Ukrainians are volunteering to protect their capital. There are two ways that you can show support from Ukraine right here at home. There's going to be an interfaith gathering this afternoon at Babiyar Park at, off of Havana and Yale. It starts at 3 New organizers picked this location because the park is a memorial for the lives of Jewish people lost in the 1940s in Kyiv by Nazi soldiers. There's also going to be collections for medical supplies to send to Ukrainian hospitals. Donations will start being collected at 3 o'clock, and that event starts at 12. And there's a benefit concert being put on this afternoon by the Nativity of Our Lord Catholic Church Choir and Orchestra. If you'd like to watch, you can head to the Denver Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. That's from 1 until 3, and all proceeds will be donated to relief efforts in Ukraine. You can find more information on the Ukrainians of Colorado Facebook page. Well, First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden, is wrapping up her weekend here in Colorado. She spoke at the Community College of Denver as part of the White House's series of Latino economic summits. Denver 7's Patrick Perez explains why, for many, it was an emotional experience. You, the Latino community of Denver, matter to President Biden. First Lady of the United States, Dr. Jill Biden, speaking to a room full of Latino leaders Saturday morning as part of a series of events. I have seen the common threads that really tie us all together. I've been reminded that our differences are precious and our similarities are infinite. This is the second of eight White House Latino economic summits across the country with the goal of advancing equity and economic empowerment for Latinos. That's what, they're, what we're doing today, bringing the work of the Biden-Harris administration to you and giving you a seat at the table. Among the crowd at Community College of Denver, people like Armando Scholz and Isabel Herrera, both students at the college and each inspired by First Lady Biden and the other speakers. I didn't believe that this can, in my, my age, at my age, that this really can make a difference because it's been a long, it's been a long journey. Pursuing a bachelor's degree at 62 years old, Isabel understands the hardships many Latinos undergo that often go unnoticed. Having those hardships acknowledged is important. I think it's going to inspire our future leaders. I really do. I really do believe that. For Armando, the summit did just that. I felt so motivated. I felt like that was like I needed that to to continue. I felt like um, like very very like proud of who I am. He wants to be an electrical engineer and with his biggest role model no longer in his life, his dad, hearing words of encouragement is just what he needs. When you have a group of people that want to actually do something for Latinos, it gives him more motivation to yes. keep going. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. Well, there are some big changes coming to security at Union Station. How RTD is taking things into their own hands after a jump in crime in the area. Plus, we are just hours away from Hollywood's biggest night. I'm Morgan Norwood, and I'll have the very latest from the red carpet coming up.